Okay, so um, hello again, everyone. Uh, I was very happy with this journey of six months for uh, the Biomimicry Educator Program. And I would like to start with the why. Why should we learn or teach biomimicry for teenagers? And the uh, one answer is this connection. For me, for, uh, from my experience with uh, this age group, I found out that these uh, students, they are so much disconnected from nature. And a little look uh, through the research, I found out that there's actually a nature deficit disorder. And one of the, um, some of the symptoms are diminished use of senses, attention difficulties, higher rates of physical and emotional illnesses. So this is actually serious. And these all are symptoms that we can see in our kids and our students. So this is the big why. So biomimicry is for reconnection. It can reconnect humans to nature and it can um, reconnect many disciplines that students learn in school and yet don't understand why they learn these things at school. So now they can see it in nature and see it in action. So yes, biomimicry can actually reconnect different disciplines like chemistry, physics, engineering, history, and even social studies. Other benefits of um, teaching biomimicry for our students, like it will help them to achieve a, uh, since it improves their thinking skills. It will inspire them to search for or design sustainable solutions. Um, it connect, connects them to nature and it's also a problem solving tool. So this is my learner profile. This is actually my son. I tested on him. And uh, at this age, they are usually thinking how they will fit in this world, how they will uh, reconnect with others, uh, who they actually are. Um, and actually what they do is many things that are um, not related to nature. So what I was hoping in my challenge is to reach a state where the student actually thinks that he really belongs, or thinks that he is, um, he is part of an ecosystem he belongs to this thing, feels that he belongs to this ecosystem. And he actually spends some time in nature and knows that he can go to nature for solutions and for just feeling better. And so the journey starts uh, with eyesight where I empowered my own senses at first. And then uh, we, got, we, uh, we went through the biomimicry theory uh, to choose what is suitable for my own challenge. Uh, I went through resources and I built a resource library. Um, also going through learning theories and what stood out for me was the universal learning design. And finally, the asknature.com was really a lifesaver for educators as I think it is because I found so many useful resources. I could add here also the website that um, biomimicry for social uh, innovation because it's really it has good um, resources for the social part of my challenge uh, it was very good for me to see that there are other curriculums and programs that are similar to what i was trying to work on and uh, i consider them as references for me and uh, things i can refer to every now and then uh, and at this point i started to think yes i can do this <laughs> Uh, because in the discovery phase, uh, I, I felt lost. I was overwhelmed with all the things that I should teach and all the examples that are out there. And then when I, I started to put them into a resource library and I saw that actually there are some programs ready-made, there are some lesson plans available, there are resources, videos, and so on, I felt safe. <laughs> so the creating phase starts. Um, this is. Um, quick overview of uh, what the curriculum will look like, starting with learning from nature and then uh, connecting the students to their ancestors because uh, also our ancestors practiced biomimicry. Um, and then I will talk about the six principles and then uh, I will give an introduction about the design methodology and then uh, ask them to uh, practice biomimicry uh, thinking skills. So for the prototype, uh, I tried many things, but uh, at first it was very overwhelming to move from the overview, the big overview to one lesson plan. Uh, so 
I worked on a prototype where I put all my objectives and the resources available and the, what kind of assessments I want to use and so on. Uh, I started evaluating my work against uh, the six uh, life principles. Uh, and what stood out that I could start really simple and then build up from there. And um, this is how to integrate mm -hmm. development with the growth. Just start with the basic seed and then build up from there. Um, I have also put together this small video. Uh, of an advertisement so that I can start market uh, marketing my curriculum. I also put together a detailed presentation in case someone calls and says, yes, let's uh, learn more about your curriculum. Uh, I also put a sample lesson plan uh, that I can present. And I got some feedback from uh, friends and some of the people I talked to. It's not formal, but uh, the feedback I got was good. Uh, it gave me insights to what is suitable more for this age group. And uh, where from here, uh, of course, I will start continue marketing my curriculum and gather more feedback regarding the curriculum. And I, I'm thinking of putting together a resource library so it will be easier for me to find the examples whenever I need them. And also I'm planning to take another course regarding the design methodology in biomimicry because I felt that if I need to guide my students through the design phase, I need to be uh, more aware of all the parts of it and the details. And many thanks to everyone that uh, joined me in this journey and gave me really good feedback. And thank you all for listening. Amazing. Well thank you. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, Sarah. That is just so exciting.